Hey, welcome to my podcast. My name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Um, thank you for tuning in to my podcast. And uh, today I'm going to do an episode more into supplements because that is an issue. And a lot of you have been bringing up these things in, in your comments on Instagram uh, to the reels there. And, and I've been seeing a lot of it uh, with our YouTube channel. And then, you know, I just see this in practice. And this has been one of those things that's been driving me for years is supplements. See, the thing about supplements is, is that they're not regulated. In the States, they're not regulated by the FDA. I'm not sure what different countries have different rules and and, and they all have that thing. But but supplements and herbs and, and vitamins, those sorts of things, minerals, they're not regulated by the FDA. And what that means is like, if I were to go buy, like, okay, so say I wrote you a prescription for like, you know, uh, 50 milligrams of something, you know, uh, as a pharmaceutical, like a 50 milligrams of an antibiotic or something, you know, I send you that prescription. If you went to Kennebunkport, Maine and filled it for 50 milligrams and you brought that pill bottle to me here, and then you got another, uh, uh, you know, say in Yuma, Arizona, you know, another 50 milligrams, same prescription brought here. And we tested those. They have 50 milligrams plus or minus maybe 5% on every single pill guaranteed. There's no variance with it. You know, for sure when you get your amoxicillin or your whatever it is you're getting, you know, it's to say 250 milligrams of azithromycin, you know, that's going to be 250 milligrams coast to coast, door to door, pharmacy to pharmacy because the FDA has such strict guidelines on that. And that is good. We need that. You want to make sure when you're taking something, it's what's on the label. Now, with the supplement industry, not so much. There is no regulation. So how that becomes an issue is like a patient presents to clinic and they have a vitamin D deficiency. And I'm like, you need vitamin D. You know, you're low in these labs. I want you to get on vitamin D. There's all these reasons why vitamin D is helpful. So I'm going to prescribe it to you. And so they say they go to their, their, their supermarket and they just pick up a bottle of vitamin D on the shelf. It says 5,000 units on it. And Dr. McCarthy prescribed 5,000 units. So I'll just take this one. They go home, they take the vitamin D for the next month and they come back to my clinic and I'm running labs because when I prescribe something, I always verify it had an impact or benefit. I'm not just going to tell you you need vitamin D and then goodbye. That's, that's not good medicine. I'm going to say you need vitamin D. This is the dose I think you should take. I'm going to run the lab in a month and make sure it worked. So when you come back in a month and your labs didn't move at all and you're taking the vitamin D religiously that you bought at your local supermarket, what went wrong? What was it? The thing is, since the FDA does not oversee the vitamin industry, there's no regulatory agency looking over vitamin D supplements. You can buy a vitamin D that says 5,000 units, but it has a lot less in there. Or the way that they made the vitamin D isn't even bioavailable. Vitamin D is a unique one. I brought this up on purpose because vitamin D is fat soluble and it needs to be prepared a certain way. I find liquid drops are the best way of absorbing it. So even though it may have a certain amount in there, it's not that it's not in there. It's just that the way it's in there is not absorbable from the individual. It's a buyer beware thing out there. So it's tricky. My goal in this episode is to start giving you tools to know what you should look for in a supplement. I want you to know it's not all good and it's not all safe. And it's important to know the difference between a good product and a bad product. But part of this is you need to make sure your healthcare provider who is prescribing these supplements to you gives you good options on what brands that they recommend and why they recommend them and where the best places to source that medication are or that supplement, excuse me, are because it shouldn't always come from your care provider. Your care provider, if they ever write you, if you ever have a care provider recommend a supplement, in the same breath they recommend the supplement, they need to tell you where you can get it other than their office. Every single time. Because if the doctor is recommending a supplement to you and saying, by the way, it's right here in my office, there is a question about their ethics in that moment. Are they recommending this supplement to you because they're going to make that sale? Do they have a, a, a you know interest in there? Or, or is it because they, they want to make you well? But, but when they're selling their own product and they're not telling you where else to get it, they're not doing their best to help you that way, there's a question there that should be asked. And we should try and get to the bottom of that because not all people out there are ethical when it comes to supplements. 
And I know many of you have posted that, your experiences with, with unethical, you know, prescribing of supplements in the past. And there's a lot of, lot of problems in that area. So how do you get a good supplement? Um, that's our goal with today's episode. So there are three things that we want to look for in a supplement. We want to know the identity of the compounds within that pill. We want to know not just what the active ingredient is, but we also want to know the fillers that are in there and, and any other, you know, preserving agents they may have thrown in there or any other like rando things that might have fallen in there from the factory because there's also cross-contamination. So we first want to know what, what's, what's, what's in there. What's the identity of the products in there, things in there. Then we want to know the strength. And we know the strength because the potency matters relative to the biological effect on the individual. If you want to have someone have the adequate level of vitamin D, you shouldn't give them 100 milligrams of vitamin D. That doesn't work. And I mean, I mean, how many of my patients bring in a supplement and they're like, well, can you let me know if this is a good supplement? Because patients do that. They'll bring their supplements to me for me to do an audit on it. And, and these guys are loaded up with garbage. I'll tell you that. There's so much stuff in there that's unuse, uh, unuseful. Like I'll see something like with CoQ10 at 10 milligrams. Listen, CoQ10 at 10 milligrams is useless. There's no benefit in there, you know? Um, but at least the company's putting 10 milligrams on there. But you you, you want to know the potency of the product. You want to know, if it, is it really 250 milligrams? You know, you want to make sure that that's the level that you can count, count on. And then and then three is going to be the purity. And I kind of should have mentioned, you know, uh, contamination in the first thing when I talked about the uh, the, the um, um identity of the compounds in there. But but still, we want to know the purity of it. And that's a big issue as well in the supplement industry because not every supplement is good. I mean, there's so many sites. You just right now, if you want to pause the video and look up herbs that have been contaminated with heavy metals, how many herbal compounds have heavy metals in them? That's an issue. There are so many times supplements are, are, are um, contaminated with, with compounds you don't want in your body. And you want to know what the purity is. You know, is this a safe thing to take? A lot of things we're buying on the internet that come from another country are not safe, you know, but we're getting a good deal on it. But still, it's not safe. You know, I, I know patients who buy a lot of, you know, interesting compounds they find on the internet and they don't have any idea what's in it whatsoever. So, so it's important to have all these things, those three things you want to know. What's in it? How strong it is? Is it pure? Three big things. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the pharmaceutical industry is regulated by the FDA, and those three things, they are constantly checked with. And sometimes they mess them up, and they get in trouble with the FDA. There's a big investigation, a recall, all those things happen. That's that level of oversight that, that prevents it from becoming, you know, a massive issue. Sometimes it still slips past the FDA. Nothing is perfect, but at least they're trying in that area. When it comes to this, a personal story I have with a patient, I had a patient, um, I'll name her Janine. Janine, if you're watching this, just remember, I, this, is, this still sits with me, this story. I saw Janine after she had gone through a period in her life of severe estrogen dominance and, you know, anxiety, depression. She had significant weight gain. Just really was just down. And, you know, we treated those things. We, we got the uh, estrogen dominance under control. We managed it. Everything was good. She returned to health. Everything was better. And then she did, you know, a, a series of lifestyle changes to, to really help bring her body weight back into alignment. So she started doing a lot of fitness, started lifting weights, going to the gym a lot. And, and I always see benefit there, always. Physical, mental, emotional, all of it, you know, it's there. And some people get way more physical because that's just how their bodies work. And other people get you know, more of the emotional. We're all unique how we do this. But hers was crazy. She, her body changed and like, like surprising. And it didn't make sense to me, but I thought it was just some kind of weird miracle. You're like, Brendan, what do you mean? So let me back up. So she's taking these supplements she was buying on the internet called from a, a company called uh, Blackstone. And if you want to pause the video now and look up Blackstone Nutraceuticals, go for it. It's a great story to look up online, but I'll, I'll give you the, the, uh, the story on here. So she's taking these, these compounds she's buying on the internet from Blackstone. These, you know, pre-workout protein compounds, these muscle synergizer supplements, these, all these weird things she's getting, you know, and she's buying this whole line of stuff from them. 
and and she swore by it. She's like, man, I started this stuff and it's amazing. You know, I'm reading them online. I'm watching their videos. This stuff is great. I was like, wow, this is doing really good for her. She's doing well. And she got like yoked. And I, that's in the industry. That means she's got like big muscles. And I was like, that's, it started getting like weird. And, and the labs I do with her, none of those labs showed, because I don't test for illegal uh, athletic performance enhancing drugs because I don't use them and I don't treat that population. That's not my job. Unknown to her was getting uh, performance enhancing steroids in her supplements. So Blackstone from 2012 to 2017 uh, were selling products that were loaded with illegal controlled substances in violations of the Designer Anabolic Steroid Control Act. Imagine you're that person that buys a supplement because you think it's good for you and you don't realize it's loaded with drugs. This is what was happening. And you're like, Brendan, that happened for five years. It did because there's no FDA oversight. So this company was able to come up with these products, source the, the steroids from another country and manufacture these illegal steroids into their products without anyone knowing. So they were doing this for five years and those steroids are not safe. Imagine you're taking that and you get pregnant and you're still taking it. What did you do to that baby? On top of that, they're just also just not safe. They're incredibly unsafe. And then the doses that were in there were not very well controlled. You don't know how much is in each thing. I mean, I go on for days on how bad this was, but she got down from 36, 35% body fat to 12% body fat using these products over the course of, I think it was a year and a half. And she didn't, she didn't look, it looked, it was different. It didn't make sense. It wasn't, it was a lot of body fat loss and a lot of changes in her body, making it more masculinized. It just was, I didn't understand it. It wasn't, her testosterone labs didn't look bad because she wasn't taking testosterone cypionate. She wasn't taking testosterone. She's taking synthetic androgens, synthetic uh, uh, hormone modulators. These these compounds that are have these negative impact um, long term on your health, but you know they make you look big, which is what a lot of people who do steroids are looking for is dysmorphia. But you know it was just amazing. But she didn't know. No one knew when that company was taken to court and the FDA was was bringing their case before the court. You know the company. I want to write read this. They claim that their products were made in an FDA-approved uh, registered facility. They actually claimed it on their website. They claimed it on their bottles. So if a patient read those bottles, it was like, wow, this is a FDA-registered facility they're making this in. They put that on there and no one saw that because it wasn't being regulated by the FDA, period. So they wrote FDA on it without the FDA regulating their name being on it. That's how crazy that one was. And then, um, you know, they, were, they owned the supply chain themselves. So no one really knew what was going in there other than them. And they were running their supply chain out of another country. So they're manufacturing it in another country, bottling it, shipping it here, labeling it here, and selling it here. And no one knew. No one knew, except for the guy who's selling it and the people buying it. There are some, the population buying it were like, this is amazing. Look at the gains I'm getting. Look how big I am. Look how all these things I am. And that population of people who was interested in that, that was what they're doing. And maybe it was an open secret with some people doing it, but it's just, kind of crazy. When the company was shut down and the owner of the company was thrown in jail, my patient then was stuck with a body that had been accustomed to steroids, illegal steroids, performance enhancing drugs for a long time. And now we had to bring her off of those and we had to help manage her health afterwards, which is also not very easy. And the body changed that went the other way for her. Knowing what's in your supplements is important. But even then, even when you, the supplement company says it's FDA registered facility, how do you know? Where does the truth come in? So here's, here's a few things I want you to know. One, there are good supplement companies out there that are not contaminated, not full of garbage. It's hard for you as a patient to find them or figure them out. One of the ways is to see whether the third party tested, independently tested. That would be something called the USP or US Pharmacopeia or NSF. There's another one. And, and these are independent companies that will take samples from 
the manufacturer and test their potency, purity, and content. So we know that the 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 um, uh, potency is X, it, that it has the chemicals they're supposed to, and it's not contaminated. Those companies will test it, the original batching they do, you know, once or twice a year. Then the third party companies will go to the store and buy samples at the store. And when they buy the samples at the store, they bring them to their lab and they test them there as well to verify that it has what's in there. So it's not just me going in and just testing batch tests in the factory. I'm also going to the store and buying at the store just to make sure there's nothing getting out into the chain that might be contaminated or there might be an issue with it. So, so third-party testing is important and looking for third-party testing or looking for any kind of registered third-party testing company on the bottle, like NSF or, or um, um, USP on the bottle, that's good. Or GMP, good manufacturing practices. These are things that companies will put on their labels. Another thing that's very important is your care provider needs to be aware of this. So when I prescribe supplements to my patients, there are certain brands I know. I've done my homework. I've contacted the company. I've gotten certificate of analysis for the products. I've spoken to them. I know what's in there. I also know how it's available. I know if they can buy it online. I know if they can buy it from uh, different vendors online, not just one vendor, but several vendors, because that's how you're going to get different prices. It's important you're able to see that it's not, you know, being inflated price. You want to make sure you're getting a reasonable price, and that's what competition in the marketplace is going to do for you. So, so the care provider, it's important that your care provider is able to point you in the direction of a good product line that's going to be helpful for you and safe for you to take and investigate it. So these are all things that need to be taken into account when you're going to choose a supplement. You want to make sure that it is being independently tested. You want to make sure that when they test it, they're verifying the potency, the purity, and they're uh, uh, testing for what's in there is what's on the label, that there's nothing else unique in there that shouldn't be in there. Again, it's hard to find that out because companies will lie on their website and they'll even lie on their bottles. Some ways to look through that. So you look on the bottle to see, is it NSF or is it USP? Those are good labels that you'll see on there to, to make sure that those two are independent tested from those two companies. Or or they're going to say on there that we, are, we have GMP, good manufacturing practicing, which means we're going to separately investigate it. Or the care provider that is recommending it can show you verification that the product that you're getting has been tested for purity, potency, and sterility. So I hope this helps. It's not easy being out there trying to navigate what's good and what's not good in the vitamin industry. If you've ever had an issue with this, please feel free to comment below in the reel if this is on Instagram or, or in the YouTube channel because I read these things. And I want you to know that when you have a bad experience like that and you share it, it helps other people see that they're not alone, you know? And, and it's important that when you share these things, because not everyone is, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of shame in when we feel like we've been taken advantage of. We don't always want to talk about how we were, you know, feel like we were taken advantage of, or sometimes we don't even know if we were taken advantage of. So when we share these stories, it helps people feel more safe to share that they had something similar happen to them, or sometimes it helps them recognize that, wait a minute, this is happening to me. Maybe this is not a good thing. So please, you know, your, your comments mean more than you realize, not to me, but to other people out there. So again, I hope this helps. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.